What's up guys? Welcome back to Rugged Adventures. Today we're talking about lighting and this is always a very hot conversation on any forum that I've ever been on related to ATVs, razors, or any other type of side-by-side. -side. People are always asking, you know, what rock lights are you using? What are the best whip lights? What uh, LED replacements can I use for my halogens? And there's a lot of different options, but I'm going to show you the ones that I've went with and what I like. And all of the um, links for these will be down in the description so that you can can just quickly get up now my philosophy on these lights for me where I am in uh, a very wooded area is I'm not going you know 60 miles an hour across the desert and you know could hit a, a, a rock real quick or some sort of small animal running across there we're doing you know 15 to 30 miles an hour so having the maximum output having the brightest most expensive lighting wasn't a big factor for me in a lot of cases i went with more of a value driven uh purchase because i would rather just have low price stuff in case i break it for example like my whip light and my uh, rock lights I beat the crap out of those on trees and rocks and things flying up. So I didn't want to spend a whole bunch of money on you know really high end stuff. Uh, and same with uh, with my light bar here. Uh, I didn't want to spend a ton of money on a big 40 inch light bar for something that I'm really not going to be using. You know because I don't need that light to go out to a you know 60 mile an hour range. I really just need it for you know 15 to 30 miles an hour. So I'm going to break down what I have for my headlights here for the light bar uh, mirror lights rock lights the uh, whip light in the back and I'll kind of go over how I installed them and uh, just everything that went along with them All right, so the very first thing that we need to talk about are headlights. The stockers, especially on these old ones with the halogen headlights, this is a 2012 800 model. Uh, the stockers were just awful. They put out very little light. It was that really just yellowy light that doesn't, I don't know, it just doesn't seem to light things up as well. Uh, and then they drew a lot of power for that. So what I did was I replaced uh, these headlights with Beamtech H13 LED headlights that are fanless. So there's no fan to get all gummed up with mud. It's just simply a heat sink type of thing. And the results are incredible uh, versus the stock units. There's just so much more light. And if you could only do one light mod, do this one because it's just so much better than, than the, the factory headlights. Uh, you'll just be you'll be highly impressed. The best part about these is that these H13 bulbs, they just drop right into the um, original housings they they're plug and play with the original uh, light uh, harnesses and then as a bonus if you have a uh, 05 to 07 super duty they also work with those as well next up we got the light bar down here and this is a 12 inch nylite combination bar and i forgot to wipe this one off but what it does is it has the middle LEDs here are a um, spotlight and then these ones here are more of a fog area type of light just based on the way that the, um, I don't know, the reflectors are, are made. And what I did with this was, this is only like a, I don't know, $20, $30 light bar. But I went in and always on Amazon underneath where they have the actual item listed you can see if they have any in the warehouse deals which are like returned items some might be missing parts some might be just like a person ordered it and then didn't want it and sent it back and so i ended up getting this light bar for like 17 dollars ship i mean it was crazy cheap uh with how cheap it was and i've used nylite products on other atvs on uh, my uh, suzuki Iger 400 i have two of their little pods they have worked fine i've beaten the crap out of it this one here has worked great it has just been uh, you know beaten up by twigs and sticks hitting the front of this because again we ride primarily in in the woods and on private property where there's not you know trails carved out real well and then along with that i added these side mirror lights and these ones were actually given to me 
by Kimmy Moto. Uh, they gave them to me to um, demo and do a review video on, and I always told them that I would be very honest, and, and I have been very um, impressed with these. And the, what's cool about this is if you guys are out in the middle of nowhere and there's, you know, it's dark, this area out here is is always pretty dark. Even if you have rock lights, which we're going to get into, this area, especially like if you're if you're looking out of the cockpit, you know, over here over here ish and then the same on the other side it's pretty dark and this really throws a ton of light down range uh, on the sides of your of your um, razor or atv or whatever and it just it goes in complement with this i have a wired on the same switch because i couldn't see why i would want one on and not the other so that really helps out with throwing light out to the side okay next up we have rock lights and now these guys here you know it seems like folks either love them or hate them because they're kind of like uh, the underglow that people put on the uh, fart can rice burner cars um, i guess back in the day i guess they still do it i don't know but i think that these serve two purposes one i think they look cool and that's just where i'm gonna stay with that i like the way that it looks with the with the red underneath it and then two it really does provide you with a lot of light for when you are in the dark and you're trying to position a tire whether you're in the rocks or for me more than likely i'm um, really close to a tree i can see exactly where this tire is because of this red light now when i bought these again i wanted a cheap uh option because i figured that they'd just be getting the crap beat out of them by road debris so i ordered these these are some amazon specials uh they only are red that's all i really wanted just to match the red color scheme of the rest of the uh the razor here so they do not change color i also didn't want to have another controller that i'd have to mess with and change colors i just wanted a switch that would turn them on and it just be done with it and so when you get to looking at these a lot of times people ask you know how did you mount it and i don't like drilling holes in my frame for accessories like this things that may not last over time no problem doing it for the skid plate for the tough skid plate down here because that's going to be you know a major item but for these guys here what i did was if i can get this and you guys can see it i just put zip ties i just zip tied the thing to it and i haven't had any problems with that um falling off or anything like that Okay, now on to another one that people say is either stupid or useful, or they like the way it looks or not. In a lot of places, these things are required because you like out in the desert or whatever, so that people don't run into each other. But I like the way that they look, for one. But two, I think they also serve a really good purpose. I see a lot of times people asking about wiring in reverse lights for their ATV so that when, you know, you put it in reverse, it, you know, turns on some sort of light on here or whatever. And there's not really a good way to do that. Some people put on micro switches on their shifters or whatever. But if you just have one of these running here, this provides a ton of light at night for reversing or just seeing behind you. Um, whatever you need light in the back of the, the rig for. And now I have this one mounted here and it's a single. And this is again a Kimimoto special that they uh, gave it to me to test and it's worked out really well and you know it's got quick disconnect and all that but i know that you all with the newer machines you guys have the flag mounts that are like right here and right here put two of those there you could put you know two of these big taller whips here and at night when you're out cruising and you want a backup uh, ca uh not camera but a backup light this is going to put out a ton of light and you can change this one to all sorts of things just like anything else i've beaten the living crap out of this one in trees too and it's just you know i back up and it'll be bent way back and i haven't had any problems with it now the last place that you could do some lighting that i haven't is in these guys you could uh replace those with some led lights and i think that that would uh definitely reduce the amount of battery draw that it has because as we all know these things don't have a ton of extra battery capacity but I haven't done anything like that yet, and uh, maybe if one of them goes out, I will get around to that. So the last thing that you really gotta get into is just how are you gonna wire all this stuff up? And there's a lot of different schools of thought on that, and probably all of them are right to a certain degree. A lot of folks get crazy into this, and they have everything on a different fuse circuit, and that's, that's cool if you want you know, only one thing to go out if you would happen to get a short somewhere. 
For me, all of these extra lights are all just extras onto the factory harness, so I really didn't care to put every single one on their own fuse box. Now, if you guys have the newer versions of these razors, they have the um, bus bar up here under the hood, but these uh, OG 800 models didn't have that. So what I did was I ran a 12 gauge wire off of the battery and I fused it. I ran that and I used, you know, oil and gas resistant uh, THHN wire up here underneath the dash and I ran that into this relay here and let's see if I can get a look at it without um, shielding the light that is a 30 amp automotive waterproof relay that's triggered from a key on position I just run one wire out from there and it's kind of hard to follow all this but it goes into the back of my uh, five pin switches just typical five pin switches and that's a combination of nylite and mic tuning and some other uh, stuff uh, other switches that I don't remember the brand names of that I just bought in order to get the the right face plates that I wanted on them and it runs essentially power goes into one and then it goes it jumps to another one and then jumps to another one or whatever that I needed to do. So the entire amperage does not go through any one of the switches when these are on. It just still stays on the cable that's jumped from the next to the next. Now I did monitor the amount of amperage that I was using with all of these lights on once I had it all hooked up and it was quite a bit lower than even what the rated amount was of each of these accessories. And so we are nowhere near 30 amps. I think it's, it's under 10 uh, measured with a um, voltmeter where the fuse goes in. And so again, these aren't the most expensive lights in the world. They do the job very well for what I need them for. And uh, if one of them gets broken, I'm not going to be too upset about it. The only uh, difference in the wiring setup here is for this whip light. This has a Bluetooth control module, which I hope you guys can see. And I wanted that to be up here and out of any type of water as best as I could. So that runs up to here and then the power wire runs um, down the down the side of this tube here and it is uh, connected into I believe one of the switches up here so that it's still fused through this uh, this fuse right here and like I said this is Bluetooth controlled from my phone I can change all the different patterns and what have you and you know that's that's you know cool to have and it's just one of those neato G whiz type of deals so if you guys like this video, um, give it a big thumbs up for me. It helps us out in the YouTube algorithm. Be sure to subscribe if you have any questions about uh, the things that uh, I talked about today, about the wiring, whatever. Leave them in the comments below. I'll try to answer them as quickly as I can. Again, all of the uh, links to these products that I have on here will be in the description. That makes it quick and easy if you wanted to get the exact same things that I am using. I appreciate you guys watching today, and I'll see you in the next one.